All right, let's move on to a story that, well, I was surprising, surprised that we kind of broke yesterday. The report back of Parliament's Finance and Expenditure Committee on what has broadly been known uh, hitherto as the Three Waters Proposals uh, for changing the way that water assets uh, are currently managed by local bodies are managed and introducing what is being labelled co-governance, giving iwi and Māori groups unelected a say in water policy. We talked to um, Tina Nixon yesterday, who is actually a Ngāi member of Ngāi and involved in their uh, negotiations and trusts and things, and also a former local body politician. And she said, reading the report back, it extends, it extends three waters and co-governance to become five waters and essentially gives Māori sovereignty. Sovereignty or unmoderated um, decision-making and policy-setting powers. That evoked an enor- enormous amount of response from, from you people yesterday. Uh, thousands and thousands of views of the interview I did and also many, many people reading and reaction, uh, reacting to Graham Adams' excellent column in our opinion section on the platform, How Three Waters Became Five Waters. And it would be fair to say, in general, the reaction was outrage and deep concern. But as I said uh, yesterday, mainstream media seem to be willfully ignoring this story, maybe because they've taken money from the government or maybe because they're just afraid, afraid of being called racist. Um, and not so interested in being called democratic and fair and balanced. Uh, many people have said to me, what is the reaction? Will this be stopped if we change? Can we change this by changing the government? And I guess that's a question we have to ask with an election about a year ago, a year away. Well, uh, I also note that the report back of the select committee Um, There were dissenting views from ACT, I think the Greens, and National. So we're going to have a look at why those parties didn't bank back um, these changes. And we are joined now by a National MP who sits on the Finance and Expenditure Select Committee when it considered all the uh, submissions that came before it and seems to have ignored them all. Simon Watts, National MP, joins us now. Simon, welcome to the platform. Thank you for joining us. No problem, Sean. Good morning. All right, first question, um, and if we could just talk up a little bit, a little bit soft. Um, um, Does the report back of the Select Committee accurately reflect the public submissions that the committee received? My view, it doesn't, uh, and that's why uh, you can see that a number of, or National and and ACT, uh, basically uh, didn't vote in support of the report. I mean, the government has not made any significant changes to the bill. Water assets are still being taken out of local ownership, and the co-governance aspect is still in there. In Uh, fact, yeah. So they didn't listen, but Simon, doesn't it make some recommended changes? Doesn't it say this should include coastal waters, geothermal waters? Doesn't it say that iwi groups get first bite at setting policy with no consultation? Yeah, but Sean, I don't remember any one of the 88,000 coming and presenting and saying that we should be including coastal and geothermal waters in their submissions. Uh, The short answer is they didn't. And this is just another example of government overreach. Let's use the opportunity to ram through a broader agenda. Uh, And as I said, the... There is no significant changes. If, if anything, uh, to the points you're raising, uh, they've, t- they've used the opportunity to throw a few more things in there. And that's, that's just a travesty for the 88,000 people that made submissions. Yeah. Well, the vast majority against. Yeah, well, Simon, not just a few things. As I said, the first starting point is that iwi or, or Harpy representatives get to make the calls on water policy without any consultation, without anyone giving them overview. And I think the report back says these changes should be designed to give effect to the Treaty of Waitangi by way of Māori sovereignty rather than um, have regard to. And that's what I'm saying, Simon. It seems to me a far more drastic change. You're saying nothing much has changed. I'm saying an awful lot's changed. They've, They've gone for the doctor here. Look, in the, 
in our report back, we actually uh, specifically uh, focused on on the point you're raising, and we've. We've said we had obviously significant concerns around uh, the Tamata Wai statements and the fact that um, only iwi could input into them. And that's just not right. We need to have all stakeholders being able to input into such conversations. And we made that point in our minority report. OK. So you would agree that the Tamana Aotewai um, provisions in the, in the report back create essentially Māori sovereignty over water? Look, I wouldn't go as, as far as that, but what I have and what we have said is, is that actually those statements uh, need to have input from all uh, stakeholders within our community, not just mana whenua. Uh, and the good example of that was when, you know, we've got streams and uh, water flows going across farms. Well, the farmer can't even input into that conversation, uh, only mana whenua. That, that's just simply not, uh, that's not right. Uh, and we've made that point that, you know, that. But at the end of the day, um, even if they modified that element of the, this piece of legislation, it's not going to cut it. National will repeal this legislation when we're in government. We've been crystal clear and we remain crystal clear of that point. OK. I'm just wondering why, given the massive nature of these changes, you didn't make more of a song and dance about it over the weekend or on Monday or on Tuesday? Well, I was on media over the weekend. We've pushed back uh, around all of these aspects and, you know, we're talking now about it. So, um, you know, there's a lot in this bill, 670 pages, uh, and um, there's a huge number of, of, of detail and element in there. But um, All right. What is your understanding as the government's timetable? And, look, can we take it because the, the you know, the report back that you disagree with is the one it goes to Parliament because of the nature of, of how Parliament works. These are the changes that the government will put in the legislation, right? These yeah, this is, this, this is done and dusted from our perspective. OK. Um, you, can, you can talk it up how you like, but these guys, the government are going to ram through this. Change. They're going to ram it through. Do you have any idea as to the timetable for ramming it through? Uh, second reading is this afternoon. Uh, and while not having any confirmation of it, uh, we know that Parliament is in urgency all next week, including to potentially Friday night. Uh, so I think that's the window they're going to use. Well, that is bloody remarkable, isn't it? Because these are fundamental and huge changes dropped out of a select committee last Friday. That'll be law by the end of next week. Well, uh, there's a number of people around the country that don't want any conversation or more conversation on this mm. topic. Uh, and so the one way to achieve that is to ram it through Parliament. Uh, you've seen the RMA legislation that was dumped in the House yesterday. I'm sure that will probably uh, distract some people from this conversation. But, mm. uh, you know, that's, that's the reality of what we're dealing with. Yeah. Is this legislation, the Five Waters Sovereignty legislation, is it urgent? I don't believe it is. Uh, we need to, it is complex uh, and is multifaceted. We need to be uh, using the time that we have to make sure it is, it is appropriate uh, to outlast, you know, and be long long sustaining. Uh, but the reality is the government have not listened and will not listen. The prime minister said we're open to changes. The minister said, you know, we're open to changes. Well, the bills on the table they haven't made what the changes. They haven't done what they've said. Uh, even I put a motion to the table after the alternative, after the three mayors put a model up. And I said, look, we've got a new model on the table, an alternative model. Can we have six more weeks to review it? Voted down by Labor members around the table and the Greens. Uh, and it was only act national. You know, so they, they had no intention of listening, even though that's what they were saying in the All right. Arena. This also comes in an environment where there is much controversy and a couple of official inquiries into the behaviour of the Minister of Local Government, Nanaya Mahuta, and the appointment of various people to water governing bodies. Um, that would seem to me too to raise questions about this legislation being passed under urgency. Look, we've been uh, vocal around that point, uh, particularly Simeon Brown, our public services spokesperson, has, has been on the record uh, multiple times around questioning uh, the process and the procedures and the appropriateness of that. Uh, we stand by those statements. Yeah. How come Chris Luxon didn't say, hasn't said anything about this? Well, Chris is on media this morning. I haven't caught up on what he's been saying, but I do know that Three Waters uh, was on the agenda. You know, you know how media works. If they don't ask the questions... Uh, you know, they well, you know what? I'll tell you what, it shouldn't be up to media asking the questions 
to set the agenda for an opposition political party, to be brutally frank. And I think many, and certainly much of the correspondence we're getting, Simon, is why is the National Party so soft on these issues? Why aren't you being more vocal about what many people see as the cre creation of an apartheid state in New Zealand? Yeah, look, I just... National has been very clear and concise right from the outset that we strongly oppose this legislation and National will repeal it uh, if we're in government next year. We can't be more clear and concise than that in terms of the intent of what we'll do. We stand by that statement. That's exactly where it is. And we've seen nothing to date uh, that will take us off path of that. So, you know, Kiwis can be confident that that's our position, uh, you know, and that's where we are. But you seem reluctant to talk about that position. Uh, I had to I invite you on, Simon. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what you, where you're getting at with that, Sean. Uh, what I'm saying is that to be in, to represent the views of people, to advocate for things, it isn't good enough to sit there and say, if someone asks me, I'll have an opinion on it. No, no, I, I'm hearing you on that. Uh, and we did, you know, I made two press statements last week uh, and one on Sunday, including Sunday. Okay. No one's I missed the one on Sunday. Reserve. My apologies yeah. to you. Okay. Well, that. That's taking parks and reserves out of local communities. Oh, okay, so uh, it's not about this issue. So you didn't well, say, no, geez, no, Three Waters no. is becoming Five Waters and um, water rights on all sorts of land are going to be decided solely by Māori groups with no reference to landowners, with no reference to local bodies. You didn't think that was worth a press statement on Sunday? What I thought was worth a press statement was that the government within this legislation have now said they're going to confiscate local parks and reserves out of our local communities. That is a significant yeah. position. Uh, and I questioned the minister on it yesterday in the House, and she was unable to be categoric around this. That, I think, is, is a significant issue, and that's the issue that I, I led with yesterday. All right. Has Chris Luxon talked to you about this report back and what's in it? Yes, we've had a conversation on that and we're working through how we're going to approach that. But as I said, our principles around repealing the legislation remain firm and strong. OK. Given that this is, though, a complex issue, the issue of water, would you repeal and go back to what is now the status quo while you looked at a better solution? Or would you look over the next year to develop a new way to manage water? Well, there's, there's two aspects. You know, the election's only a year away. So in the period between now and then, we will continue to work up uh, what is the alternative model that we will replace yep. uh, the, this legislation with. Uh, within the early days of a national term of the future government, we will repeal this bill, uh, and then we would look to replace it with the model that we've been working on. OK, uh, with what the priority year. would you repeal the bill? Uh, this would be done... This would be high priority early, as early as possible, uh, and we've been con clear and concise around that. Okay. Simon, I thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, this morning. Thank you indeed for your time. Thanks, Sean. Cheers. That is Simon Watts, National MP on the Finance and Expenditure Select Committee. He's confirmed everything Tina told us about the report back yesterday. But I'm sorry. I get the feeling they may not want to go into bat on this issue in a loud way. Yes, we have a complete guarantee uh, the legislation will be repealed and we have confirmation, yeah, this is going to be law before Christmas, people. This is going to be law before Christmas, passed under urgency when it's not urgent legislation. And that is the world we live in right now. But I'm sorry, I'm going to make the call here and now. National are scared of issues like this. They are playing to cancel culture because they're afraid of being called racists. Um, and I think that's gutless, just personally.